Good morning, it's Sunday, June 7th, and uh, we're gonna do some crop scouting. So, uh, I'm gonna hop in the truck here and go look at our winter wheat fields and see how close they are to what we call a T3 fungicide timing application. And T3 is when the heads of the wheat are starting to pollinate and we wanna protect against a disease that can infect the heads of the wheat that will cause a uh, toxin actually. Uh, Dawn it's called. Uh, I can't pr pronounce the chemical name of it. Uh, we call it kind of fusarium head blight in wheat, uh, but it does have the ability to produce a toxin. So we don't want that. So uh, we spray to protect the wheat. And we also have some other diseases that are showing up in the wheat as well, some powdery mildew. So we'll hop in the truck, go for a quick tour and uh, see what those stages are at and uh, yeah we call it uh, head to bread basically when the heads pop out like this we're six weeks from bread so uh, our wheat doesn't actually go into bread it's a soft wheat uh, so it's made for cookies and crackers uh, not so much bread but uh, maybe I should just call it head to cookie in six weeks on a sad note, we did have a farm accident last night. We were doing hay yesterday, uh, and it was uh, pretty busy with tractors and wagons uh, unloading into the bagger and running back to the field. And last night, uh, our poor old Border Coley Duke, who is well, who was 15, had has a bad habit of laying underneath things. And uh, in the dark last night, uh, he got ran over by a tractor. So. Uh, sadly, last night, to end the night wasn't the way I wanted to, but uh, we had to uh, dig a hole for our poor dog, Duke, and uh, bury him last night. So, rest in peace, Duke. So, we're just kind of at the first kind of wheat field down the road here uh, at where my dad lives, and it looks really good. I, I'm optimistic on the wheat. It's quite short this year, which is... Not surprising for the weather that we've had, uh, kind of cool there at the start of the year. But uh, it's coming along nicely. The population's pretty good on it. The heads, they don't look huge, but uh, they're not horrible. So I'm just kind of walking into it and get my legs soaked. But uh, this is kind of what we're looking at. You can see here, the heads are just kind of popped out. So what we're trying to watch here is this last leaf that comes out of the wheat plant here. This is called the flag leaf. And once the kind of head gets above the flag leaf like this wheat plant is here, you can kind of see, uh, that would be day zero. Uh, so how we time this for the fungicide application, I would probably stage this farm of my dad's here. At day one, um, day zero to day one, we're seeing some flowering. I'll just grab this head here. Uh, I'll flip the camera around, but when I say flowering, you'll see the flowers on it just kind of sticking out of the weed head. There's little dangles, the anthers from the flowers. So uh, this would be kind of day one, day two. And we want to spay kind of day three to day, well, day two to day five is kind of our target. So kind of looking at this field, it looks like we'll be doing a fair bit of spraying kind of Monday, probably Monday because another field will check is farther along. Maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of in that time frame. Uh, so this week's kind of going to be a fair bit of wheat spraying, as I said, to protect this from disease. So those are the little flowers that are coming out. So... I'll have to really check my book, but as I said, I'm pretty sure that that is probably day one. This the, head, the heads here are kind of zero, day zero to day one. So, uh, but we got some other issues which I'll show you. I didn't expect it, but we have on this leaf some powdery mildew. The thing about weed is the flag leaf. The flag leaf is kind of a very important leaf. Uh, it's the last leaf of the stem and a lot of the energy and 
and the chemical reactions within the plant, the photosynthesis happens from what's that leaf surface area of the flag leaf. It also is the leaves underneath it as well, but the flag leaf we have to keep clean of disease. And when I'm seeing that powdery mildew, it can actually go up into the canopy. Uh, it starts low and goes up. Not only are we trying to protect the weed head from disease, now we have to, because of this powdery mildew in here, we'll have to keep the flag leaf clean as well. So our T3 fungicide application time is gonna clean up a lot of disease. It might not get rid of what we have, but a lot of them are preventative, so it doesn't spread. So uh, it, looking at this stuff now, it's pretty critical that we get out and get some of this fungicide application done. I'm in a different field now, across the road from the other one. And even though this one was actually planted later, it's probably farther along. It's a little thinner. It was probably a questionable stand we wanted to leave, but overall the field was pretty good. And uh, it's just really good for us to have a weed in rotation because we can get a manure applied in the, in the summertime here in August, get a cover crop growing, really help improve the soil health. And this one actually does need some improvement and we'll probably end up having to descript this because we have some deep, uh, uh, you know, hard pan compaction in this farm about six inches down that we're going to have to break through and get it kind of fixed up. So uh, wheat really helps us do stuff like that and it's good for the soil. So this one's a little bit farther along. I'm seeing a lot more of those little anthers, flowers kind of peeking out. More of the heads are above the, the main stem through up past the flag leaf. So uh, all the wheat seems fairly close. So we'll go look at our last planted field and then we'll go to our first planted field and see what it looks like. But you can kind of see the difference in color behind me. Where it's dark green, it's not quite headed yet. Uh, this field is a little bit variable, as I said, but you can kind of see the, the wheat change in color. It's always a fun time for me because you get to see the weed heads and see, is it gonna be good or is it gonna be bad? We got a lot of weather to get through and growing conditions, but uh, we're actually relatively dry. A lot drier than uh, I thought we were. I looked at some longer, well, I looked at some of our rainfall records and we've been Without a major rain event, I would say anything that's over 10 mils or three quarters of an inch, no, sorry, a quarter of an inch or a half an inch. Uh, we haven't had anything like that since uh, May 18th. So we're, as I said June 7th, uh, we're getting these little, you know, four mils here, two mils here, you know, a tenth or two of an inch, but nothing major. And we could use a nice all day soaker you never miss an opportunity to check the canola field quick and it is just freaking ridiculous how fast this stuff grows so we went from flowering to uh, pods and look how big those pods are like it's ridiculous I just I am flabbergasted by this crop and really <laughs> cautiously optimistic but I've never grown canola before I haven't been in a canola field too often either I see them a lot when I was in Western Canada but just to give you a sense how big I know my face is dark the uh, sun I'm trying to avoid the sun, but to give you a sense how big these pods are, I'll put one in my hand. So to me, that looks pretty big. So um, I'm happy. I don't know how that compares. So uh, I know there's been some people leaving comments on some of the YouTube videos. So I know some of them are saying it looks good. So let me know what you think. I'm not sure if that's an average saw up. If that's an average pod size or what, but I'm up. Op I'm optimistic. Since I'm right beside a soybean field, I figured we'd just walk in and look at it quick too. And they look good. I'm happy. You can probably see a nice little haze of green behind me. And they're looking pretty good. They're growing pretty quick. So they are what we call the unifoliate stage. So the first leaves that come out uh, after they kind of comes out of the ground with the Soybeans are funny, well legumes, the way they grow is you plant the seed in the ground and then actually the seed grows a root 
and then the root and stem push the seed with, through the ground and what the seed really is called is cotyledons. So the first things that come out are cotyledons and then after that is two leaves which are called trifoliates, no unifoliates and then after that each leaf is three. So they're just shooting their first trifoliate here shortly so I'll give you a, a view of them. So here's a good example right here. Those are the cotyledons and it hasn't put, uh, it lost its unifoliates. So these are unifoliates right here, one leaf, two leaf, there's two of them. And then the next leaf coming is right in here and that's the first trifoliate. So they're growing good. The stand you might look at and think it's thin or uneven, but that's the nature of using an air seeder or a drill to plant soybeans. I always kind of equate it to uh, controlled spill because you're kind of just metering, you're dumping seed out of uh, a meter and it's just kind of getting sporadically placed along uh, in the soil where corn is much more uh, singulated, like I talked about with those discs. So you can do that with a a planter, you can plant soybeans with a planter. I just don't have one that's narrow enough rows. These are 15 inches apart. Um, or my corn planter is double that, so it's 30 inches. But with our air seeder, we can do 15. So even though they look kind of uneven and sketchy maybe, uh, soybeans are very adaptable at using space around them. So if they sense they have a big space around them, they'll branch out and put more stems out or pods so I don't get too worried as long as it's fairly consi consistent and there isn't big areas of really really low population because then that's a problem because there's not enough beans to compensate for all the space uh, but this year everything's good we only replanted 60 acres and in, uh, in hindsight it might have been okay but uh, it does look better now we can look at that today if you want to I guess you can't really tell me I get to do what I want we are focusing on wheat, but just since we're out, we might as well take a look at some of these crops so you can get a sense of what they're like. This is one I was planting when you saw the video and I kind of showed the canola field beside me. Okay, we're in another wheat field here. And uh, I just finished checking some other soybean fields. I didn't have the camera on because I kind of showed you that one. Uh, and they all kind of look the same, which is really good because it means they look good. So. Happy with how the beans are coming. Uh, and this wheat field is kind of like the one I showed you uh, at the start of this video. Uh, my dad's place, but it is just clearing the, uh, coming out of the boot and some of it's cleared the flag leaf. So I'm looking at this field and it's about day zero probably, or pretty close to it. So uh, based on kind of what I said at the start of the video, I'm thinking more and more like, Tuesday, Wednesday we'll probably be spraying, uh, then Monday, Tuesday. We'll have to watch, there's a bit of a chance of rain, but not a big one, so. But it's gonna be really hot on Tuesday. I think it's supposed to be like 31, feels like 30 something. Uh, so today is a little cool. I'm in t-shirts and a short and the breeze is just a little cool, but it's nice fresh air, no humidity in it, so. Uh, the worst part about that a little windy, dry humidity, it's drying out the soil, so. Uh, the one good thing about no-till, I've been seeing in the soybean fields, actually, I should have shown you, but uh, the residue actually helps stop some of that evaporation of soil moisture, so under some of the old corn stalks, you can still see dark soil. So there's moisture there, um, but uh, I wouldn't uh, be upset if we got a rain. But I'll show you what uh, I mean about kind of just coming out of the boot and the boot means kind of inside the stem and uh, I'll show you where a leaf head is just splitting out the side and uh, what it's doing is trying to get past the flag leaf so um, sometimes it gets snagged and it deforms the head a little bit I'm not seeing too much of that in here there's a little bit but I'll let you see what I'm talking about
And as I said, sometimes when that head comes out like that, it gets snagged. And this is kind of what you see with a head snag. And it's not, it's not very high numbers. Uh, some varieties tend to be a little bit more genetically predisposed to do that. Um, and there's also been some concern about aphids in the wheat. Um, aphids are a piercing and sucking insect. Uh, they're little juicy, fat, green kind of critters and they suck the juices out of the plants. So if you get too high a number, especially in these drier conditions, uh, it can have quite an impact on the yield, but I'm not seeing enough to even worry about it. And disease in here looks uh, pretty good too, so um, not any real concern other than we just gotta protect the head of from uh, head blight. The one thing about that kind of deformed head or uh, head snag. Sometimes you run into issues from the cold injury. So that time I was a little worried about frost and impacting the canola and the wheat. Sometimes the cold injury can cause some hiccups as well. And also the product I use to control the weeds in here uh, is a hormonal. So sometimes they can have a little bit of an impact too. So I'm not seeing anything that, that concerns me. So it's all good. Well, holy crap. I came to our first planted wheat field and it's uh, full flower here. You can actually even smell the pollen. I'll show you. So I'm not sure how well you can see the anthers, but they're hanging out. So this one came really quick. Now the headland's a little bit more advanced than when I get out in the field. And there's some spots I'm trying to figure out. You can see some streaking. I don't know if you can see it or not kind of darker green every 30 inches. And I honestly think that's where the old corn row was. So there's a bit of a delay in maturity where the old corn rows were, I believe. Yep, looking at it here. Uh, so it's just old corn stalks that maybe slowed the wheat up a little bit, but uh, this one is probably gonna get sprayed tonight. If the wind dies down, if not tonight, tomorrow morning, first thing. So we got our first field, we got a spray. And this was the first planted. So it was planted in September after the black beans, like I've said, the rest were all planted kind of in October. So um, maybe two weeks difference in planting date between this wheat and my next stuff, uh, which was the field that we were just in. So this is, uh, it looks good. I don't, I'm not great at guessing yield, but Heads look good. I always kind of have a saying that uh, if you can't see the ground through the wheat canopy, then it's a good crop. That's what the old timers say anyways. So, I'll make sure the sprayer is ready to go. I'll show you some of the fancy stuff we do to spray wheat. But yeah, we're getting dry. The headlands are a little tough here. Uh, they do get compacted on this farm a little bit worse because this the way it's set up we actually farm it kind of i would call it the short side instead of the long side it's split up funny and just with having the side road here right where the truck is here we're able to load wagons here and do stuff so anyways we've got our first field that's ready to go so the wind has died down and it's uh good conditions to spray so i want to get that one field sprayed that i was talking about there when we were walking around earlier this uh, this fine day. Okay, in the sprayer, and I'm just gonna get the uh, boom folded out in the yard here, and hop out and show you uh, special nozzles we use. With the wheat heading uh, fungicide application, what we're trying to do is cover that whole head with a fungicide to protect all the little flowers and where the kernels are gonna form in the head. And to do that, we need good coverage. So we actually have nozzles that have two holes or two tips and a single nozzle. And one kind of sprays down on an angle in the front and the other one sprays kind of back. So as we drive through the field, the front ones kind of get the one side of the head and the back nozzles get the other side of the head. So that's the way they're supposed to work. I got some water in the tank uh, doing a final rinse out on the sprayer. And I'll show you what I mean uh, once I get it folded out and I'll spray some water out in the yard and you'll get an idea of what we're trying to create with these nozzle tips.
So those tips are a lot different than my normal tips. My normal tips just spray straight down and they're a bit coarser because they work with my fancy system on my sprayer with the special sol solenoids that maintain pressure like I talked about in other videos. These ones I'm using on the bypass of that and it's more of a straight typical rate controller style nozzle setting. So I run higher pressure, I want some fine mist, I want a rolling plume. Uh, and that's why we kind of have those nozzles like that. So I don't know if the camera picked it up very well, but you'll see it's kind of a, a lot more of a mist. And uh, we want that because we just want that rolling plume to get good coverage on the weed head to protect it from uh, disease and uh, and those diseases that can provide or start to create toxins within the weed itself. So I'm just gonna get loaded up here with uh, some fungicide, head to the field and we'll get going. Mm -hmm. 